In this video, I'm going to be talking about whether or not it's a good idea to buy index funds when the market is at an all-time high. There are long stretches of time in the stock market where the indexes are breaking records almost every single day, such as right now. The S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, they all seem to be breaking new records almost every week. And you may be wondering, is it really a good time to be buying index funds? So I'm going to break down this video into three parts. First, we need to be on the same page about what exactly we're referring to when we talk about an index fund. Second, we want to tackle one of the biggest fears about investing in the stock market when the markets are in all time high. And that's simply the fear of losing your money. Now, I want to help you set aside the fear and anxiety and consider what the data tells us. I crunched the data, I did the research for you, and I think you'll find the results really informative. And third, I want to tackle another common fear about investing when the market is at its peak. And that is the assumption that you're going to miss out on a great buying opportunity when the market does go down and you think it's better to keep your powder dry, so to speak. Again, I'm going to dive deep into the data on this one as well. And so be sure to stick around till the very end. And if there's anything I missed in my analysis, be sure to add that in the comments below. In the context of this video, when I refer to index funds, I'm specifically referring to low cost and diversified index funds like VTSAX or VTI. VOO or VFIAX or SPY and other funds that are tracking the S&P 500 or a total stock market index. So what is an index fund? An index fund is simply a portfolio of stocks and bonds designed to mimic the composition and performance of a financial market index. Some of the biggest and most popular index funds track the S&P 500, which is an index that is made up of 500 large US companies across virtually all sectors and industries. It is by far the most widely followed stock index, and it's made up of companies like Amazon or Apple, Facebook, JP Morgan Chase, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, so on and so forth. Now, if you're interested in diving deeper into index funds and ETFs, be sure to check out some of these other videos, which I will link down in the description below. I talk about what specific index funds you should consider, what's the difference between an index fund and ETF or mutual fund, what are some index funds that you should avoid. So a lot of valuable content, so be sure to check them out. Now, let's get to the first big concern people have about buying index funds when the market is at its Obviously, there is a heightened awareness that they could potentially lose a lot of money because they're exposing themselves to a eminent market drop. So there's a lot of assumptions we're making here and let's tackle them one by one. First, if you're a long-term passive investor, timing the market is not really relevant to your strategy. You're in it for the long haul and you're not too concerned about the short-term stock market movements. You're in it for the inherent or intrinsic value of the stock market rising as opposed to short-term stock price movement. But for the sake of argument, let's assume that you bought into an S&P 500 index fund just before the index crashes. Let's consider how much money you would lose if you invested at the worst possible time. And just to get a sense of how bad it could get, I pulled the daily closing prices for the S&P 500 going back to 1960. Between 1960 to 2020, there were eight market peaks that were then followed by a recession. The first peak, 1961, the market dropped 28%. Second peak, 1968, market dropped 36%. Third peak, 1973, 48%. 1980, 28%. 1987, 34%. 2000, 49%. 2007, 56%. And finally, 2020, the market dropped 34% earlier this year. Taking the average of all these drops, the average percentage loss from high to low was 35%. Eight data points isn't a whole lot, but it does tell us that you can assume you'll lose about a third of your money if you invested at the worst possible time. But that's just an average, and it has varied widely over the last 60 years from 28% on the low end to 56% on the high end. Now, assuming you had invested at the worst possible time, you want to know how long it will take for you to be able to recoup your losses and break even. How fast can you expect the market to recover so that you get your original amount back? So for this, we're gonna go back to the closing price data and I will break down for you exactly how long it took 
for you to break even after those market peaks. I'm not going to read off each of the numbers, but the fastest recovery from a major market drop happened earlier this year at six months. If you had invested in a market peak in February 19 before COVID hit, and you had stayed in the market, you would have all your money back and slightly more by August 18. The longest it took to break even was just about seven and a half years after the 1973 peak. But overall, the average number of years to break even across eight market peaks is just over three and a half years. Now, you shouldn't be investing just to minimize your losses, you want to get a return on your investment that's above and beyond your original amount. So the next reasonable question to ask is how long would it take for you to double your money if you had invested at the market peaks? The S&P 500 has closed at a price that's more than double the peak prices for only seven of the last eight peaks that we were looking at. As of its recording, it has yet to have doubled since the pre-COVID pandemic peak. The amount of time it took the market to double in value after the peaks varies quite a bit. The longest it took to double in value was in 1961 at 21 years, while the shortest it took was in 1980 at just over six years. So based on the data, it would take about an average 14 years for you to double your investment if you had invested at the height of the S&P 500. So what are we to think about 14 years? Is it good? Is it bad? Well, according to the rule of 72, you should be able to double your money in just over seven years if we assume a average nominal stock market return of 10%. And if we assume an, a rate of return of 8%, you should be able to double your money in about nine years. And if you aren't familiar with the rule of 72, it's just a quick rule of thumb that tells you how quickly you can expect your investment to double given a rate of return. So having to wait 14 years as opposed to what should on average take seven to nine years is not that great. And that may be the long-term consequences of investing in an index fund when the markets are at all-time high. But wait, don't count out index funds just yet because there's another assumption that we need to tackle here. How you buy into an index fund is a whole topic that I'm not gonna get into in this video in depth, but it does matter a lot. For my analysis, the assumption was that you are making a one-time lump sum investment at market peak as opposed to a recurring investment strategy. If you're just starting to invest and you think the market's getting frothy, you might wanna consider something called dollar cost averaging as a way to lower the risk of you losing a lot of money when or if the market does drop. You might already be dollar cost averaging in your 401k or IRA and you didn't know it, but there is a term for it. Essentially what you're trying to do is buy index funds in small amounts consistently over time instead of making a single large purchase. For instance, imagine you had $1,000 to invest and for simplicity, you want to buy an index fund over the course of 10 months. You could take that $1,000 and invest it all in month one, but then you take on the risk of the market dropping and losing a lot of money in month two. On the other hand, if you invested by dollar cost averaging, you would buy $100 worth of that index fund in month one, another $100 in month two, another hundred dollars in month three, so on and so forth. By dollar cost averaging, you smooth out your investment purchases and reduce volatility in your portfolio. You experience smaller downswings, but you also experience lower upswings. So if this is something that you want to learn more about, do let me know down in the comments. The second fear that I want to tackle is the assumption that buying into an index fund when the markets are at all-time highs means that you're missing out on amazing buying opportunities when the market does drop and you would prefer waiting it out and keeping your powder dry. The assumption is based on the premise that you can time when the market peaks and when the market bottoms out. Two timing decisions that are nearly impossible to predict. And getting those two decisions right is critical if you want your amazing buying opportunity. And here is why. This chart, which is based off of, again, the S&P 500 daily closing price data, is showing you the quarterly rate of return from the market bottom after the seven market peaks we had talked about earlier in the video. The average trend shows that the growth rate is really aggressive at first, and then it finds out the further you go out from the market low, indicated by Q0. This second chart is a different way of looking at the previous chart and this one is showing you the quarter over quarter growth rate and it's indicating that the highest rate of growth has been consistently the quarter immediately following the market bottom indicated by again Q0. Then it levels out very quickly closer to zero. Looking at hindsight it seems pretty obvious and intuitive that the most amazing buying opportunities happen in the quarter immediately following the market bottom but you can't predict when the market bottoms out 
And so to get those incredible gains, you have to be in the market in the first place. So by waiting to invest in the stock market, you could be missing out on some of the best opportunities to grow your portfolio because you just don't know when they will happen. So it's really in your favor to be invested in the stock market for the long term. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy videos on investing and finance. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.